Hello, everybody. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the global digital infrastructure and connectivity markets. We're very excited today to join you from Capacity Europe, live from London here, uh, to chat with uh, Dylan Carver. So you're strate- you're working strategic sales with Africa Telecom. Yes, uh, yeah. And so we've we chatted with you uh, back at ITW, I believe. And so we're going to get an update oh, about memories. the latest. Uh, with Africa Telecom now, yeah. so uh, so welcome to JSA TV. First thank of thank you very much, Kines. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, I'm really happy that you, that you had the time to join us today. So let's jump right into it. Um, so uh, of course, fiber optic expansion in Africa is a really crucial initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you could just start off by telling us your kind of ongoing plans to work with operators to um, set them up with last mile access. Sure, Kines. Um, yeah, West Africa. Ah. It comes back to the 2010 years uh, when ACE came uh, and into actually West Africa, uh, a World Bank initiative um, that uh, had a purpose to allow uh, the private ISP ecosystem in each of those uh, lendings to basically have access to the World Wide Web mm-hmm. without going through the incumbents um, cables. And uh, it gives us a launch pad to mm-hmm. basically uh, get introduced ourselves to the ecosystem and mm-hmm. develop the data uh, e- economy. Excellent. Awesome. And uh, so you talked a little bit about ACE already, submarine cable. So is there yes. anything you, else you want to add there? So, yeah, uh, Kines. Mm-hmm. So the ACE system is a very complex system. It's starting from Europe, mm-hmm. namely France and Portugal. And then it trickles down all the way to Cape Town in four segments. One segment, segment number one, Europe, all the way to Dakar. Segment three, all the way to Abidjan. Segment four, France Automate to Cape Town. What happens is that we realize that by playing the partners that had capacity access on that system, it allowed us to integrate a network with their network through the ACE as a backbone. And that gives us a legitimate, credible purpose to introduce ourselves to the tier ones, Mm -hmm. tell them, hang on, guys, we can actually terminate solutions for your and corporate national, uh, multinational sites, uh, antennas. Mm -hmm. And we can do it in all West Africa, thanks Mm -hmm. to ACE. And then the externality is built on the relationship with those ACE uh, folks. And now we... uh, going into Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Northern Africa, and we're doing a Pan-African one-stop shop. Thanks to ACE, it allowed us to uh, create a uh, one service uh, provider for a unique SLA standard wherever in Africa. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems really fast growing. You've it got a, a lot on the move right now with Africa's Telecom. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we came uh, into the market with ACE and mm. the ecosystem. Today, we went from that partnership business model that is very lease orientated, mm. buy and sell orientated, to actually harnessing local footprint, uh, ISP um, ownerships. And right now, we operate out of 10 markets, namely all the landlocked West African places such as Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, but also Cameroon, DRC, South Africa, and now Kenya. Mm. So you can see that our trajectory is very, very scaling up itself based on how we see the market and echoing it with an equally dynamic, let's say, growth. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with well, us. That's a great, things. really excellent update. It's mm-hmm. things are moving so quickly that even since ITW, you know, there's been a lot of development. Uh, and yeah. so, speaking of, um, if we we could kind of, uh, you know, look at the crystal ball a little bit over the next five to ten years, what do you, where do you kind of see the evolution of last so, mile access in Africa? So, one friend of mine told me uh, the data is king. Mm. Content is King Kong. <laughs> that means, <laughs> looking at this analogy that is, uh, that is very uh, meaning anything and, and nothing at the same time, is that the, the, the growth of the infrastructure uh, ecosystem driven by the CDN is going to revamp and reshape the way operators interact to each other. Mm. And we as Africans have built a business unit based on infra and data mm. center and we're trying to converge this under the Africa's brand. Hmm. So we've got Medusa in North Africa. We've got the Barcelona Landing Station as a neutral open access data center, eliminating the back of fees in order to streamline content back and forth from a CLS, terrestrial, and wet uh, submarine segment. What we see is that we need to be responding 
to the growth of capacity under the water with new cables such as Ekiano mm. and to Africa and be able to respond ac- adequately to our customer base that is current mm-hmm. by following the price trend that is more and more, let's say, re- in the reducing line, mm-hmm. but also scale ourselves closer to the end customer because we need to have more operations that can sustain the easiness of getting accesses on those subsea se- segments. So yeah, following the content, that's Africa's motto today. All right. Yeah. Following the content. You, you heard it here first. Um, okay. So I think, you know, we could definitely chat about this many, many more hours probably. And but I'm happy to do that if yeah, you want to. Uh, hopefully this, this got you excited about what Africa's <laughs> Telecom is doing. And you can go check out their website and reach out to Dylan if you have any questions. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us. Chines, it's a pleasure. And thank you to have me for a second round. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And thank you to our viewers as well. One last round of thank yous uh, for joining us here on JSA TV. As always, happy networking. Bye-bye.